Hello. Uh, today I'm going to talk my adventure with uh, NXP Secure Boot. So about me, who am I? I'm Alex, I'm Alexander, but you can call me Alex, it's easier for everyone. I'm part of the applications team now for the last two months, basically working on Sleep ECI and the container ecosystem. And previously I was in the automotive team that's where this talk comes from. So, Disclaimer before before we start. Uh, this this was a proof of concept for a customer. It was a customer request, and it isn't isn't really tested. Like uh, we built the image, we sent it to the customer, and unfortunately, I'm still waiting for them to to say that if it worked or not. But please don't leave. There are some interesting bits I believe in this talk that might be useful for you. Um, so uh, also. I'm not an expert on this topic, so <laughs> another disclaimer that is not here. But, uh. So what is Secure Boot? I believe everyone knows the Secure Boot that is a standard part of the UFI uh, implementation, but that's not what we're going to talk about here today, but it's, it's a similar, uh, similar implementation. So uh, in the, the case for Secure Boot, uh, uh, we want to ensure that the images are trusted, so ensure the authenticity of the images that we are booting, and we also want to ensure the integrity of image if it's not if it has not been tampered with. And for secure boot, each each component is is usually signed during the boot uh, is usually signed, and during the boot process, uh, the components are are verified, and if the verification fails, ideally, the the boot would be interrupted. So. You might be like thinking uh, secure boot, trusted boot, chain of trust. There are different names that I use uh, in the documentation. NXP call, calls it NXP secure boot, but also calls NXP chain of trust. If you go to the ARM trusted firmware, they call uh, TBBR or trusted boot on, on NXP. So there is different naming around, so don't get too, too, too attached to, to the name of the idea of secure boot is, is the same if it's just boot chain, chain of trust is, is a similar idea. So how it works and the case for, for NXP. So each image is, is signed and the authentication of uh, and each and the, the it, each image is, signature is, is verified during, before the execution. So we have the, the boot room that lives in, in the CPU that's responsible for, for verifying uh, the, the BL31, BL32, and BL33. <coughs> and we, we have the boot flow that is, uh, it goes from the boot room to the platform initialization. It, this varies according to the platform. And from there it goes to the TFA runtime and if you have trusted OS, it could go to OPT or not, but that's op optional, it's not really required. And from TFA, it would go to, to Ubud and from Ubud to the kernel. So the, the boot room would validate uh, TFA, OPT, and Ubud signatures. And for the kernel, Ubud could verify the signatures of the kernel, for example. And why we need it? When we, we're, here we're talking about uh, industrial applications, embedded hardware, and we want to ensure the security devices. You, you don't want people to be poking in your image or trying to replace the firmware with something else because in, in certain scenarios, the, those appliances, uh, they have like some security standards or they, they are critical and you don't want people to be tampering with those appliances like medical devices or if you're in a car, you don't want people tampering with your car. And in some cases, it could be also for compliance, maybe some regulations, and I'm not entirely sure if that would be applied, but the, the cyber resilient ad from, from you, it applies some, there's some definitions for, for security of devices. And about hardware support on NXP, this is currently available for the IMX family, uh, certain IMX, the ones that have high insurance boots, so IMX 7, 8, 9 should be supported, plus a few others. And this is also available for the Q or Q family, that is basically the layer scale, uh, if they have a Q or Q trusted architecture. 
So steps to have secure boot on NXP. We need to prepare the image. So we build the binaries, we prepare the root FS, and we side those binaries. We need to set up the board. So the setup varies by the board that you have or the platform, it varies. Uh, you need to look into the, the manual how, how to use it. And to set up the board, we first need to enable secure boot. That's usually done by blowing a fuse somewhere with some comments. Then you need to program the keys in the board or the hash for the keys in the board with another comment. And I think to remember that this is a one-time operation. It can be undone. Once you enable secure boot, it blows a fuse and it can be undone. What can be redone if you don't blow another fuse is to reprogram the key. So usually the board has a developer mode and a production mode. In the developer mode, you can flash the key multiple times, so you can experiment with. But once you, you turn, you, you blow another fuse and you put the board in the production mode, you can't write the keys anymore. So once those keys are there, it, 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 it's basically it can be undone. So once you're deploying that in, in a field, that's the security that no one is going to tamper with the image because it's, it, in theory, it should be impossible to replace uh, the keys that are embedded in the hardware. So th these keys are physically in the hardware. And once we set up the board, we can flash our image to desired medium. It can be MMC, SD card, or another supported device by, by the board. And you can power on the board. So we mentioned about signing, and there, there is a tool to sign the images that are that is provided by, by NXP. So there are many bits that need to be signed, and the signing can happen in, in different stages when you're creating your image. So there is a tool that's called NXP Code, Code Signing Tool, or CST. And this is a collection of command line tools that perform different operations, like creating your keys, uh, tools to sign the binaries, tools to create secure headers, tools to even program the fuses in the board. And there are two, two CST that I'm aware of. There is one coding signing tool for the IMX high assurance boot, and there is one coding signing tool for the QRQ and layer escape platform. And about building an image, uh, thinking, taking everything into consideration, now that we have CSD, we need to generate the keys first, that is called the super root key. These are the keys that are going to be used to sign the images that we have. And when I talk about images, it's the binary blobs, not the end image, so the binary blobs that we have. And also we can, you're going to write, you should write that hash to, to the board in the, set up board process. So to prepare the binaries uh, from the NXP platform, you often have some NXP blobs that are proprietary. You don't recompile those, you just take those and put it somewhere in an offset in, in, in the SD card. But we need to prepare the kernel, you need to run FS, device tree, we need to compile ARM transfer firmware, reboot, in my case, for the LX2160, we went with a U-boot script and, and a fit image, and then you need to, to sign the, the, the binaries. Most of the binaries are, are going to be signed by ARM Trust Femur. It, it handles during the build time. You just need to inform the proper build comments. I'm going to show it later. That then, then, then ARM Trust Femur is going to, to, to sign everything for you. But it requires the coding signing tool available because it uses underneath. And we also need to generate some secure boot headers and this is provided by, by CSD as well. So these are things that needs to be written in certain regions, uh, in one region of uh, the memory, uh, SD card, EMFC or flash, whatever. So, for ARM Trusted Firmware, it supports uh, two different options for chain of trust or for, for, for secure boot for, for NXP, but we are interested in, in the NXP CF, CFS headers. But it also supports uh, uh, using certificates 
X509 that is uh, from ARM itself, an implementation, not from, from X. But that varies, and I'm, I'm not going to cover this here. I'm just going to cover the, the NXP side. So the, the CFS headers, they are embedded into each image, namely the, the TFA, the OPT, if, if you're using OPT, we're not using in our case, and also Ubud. And for the LX2160 a we have a few other items that are required to build uh, TFA. Uh, we need some NXP bobs that are uh, the RCW and the DDR5. These are for in board initialization, basically. We can we need Ubuntu as well, compiled for the LX2160 a And possibly, if you want, you can have OPT as well. And we need the signing keys in the root folder of TFA. It, it's not possible to parametrize where, where the root keys are. So currently, you need to put into the, the root folder. And the names should be Asarka Brians and Asarka Pub. And here, I show how, how you can build um, I'm just a few more for, for the LX160. Uh, <laughs> Wait, don't, 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 don't. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you can see. Yeah, I guess you can see. So first, we need to FIP, and we need to build the, the FIP and the PBL. This compiles the FIP and PBL, and as you can see, we 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 mentioned the the platform that we're using. Uh, we tell it it's trusted boot equals one. We pass CSD uh, boot mode. We need to specify. Uh, for what we are building. So in, in this case, the boot mode is from SD card. If it was another boot device, it would switch the boot mode. And for the LX1260, you need to pass the, the RCW. And the, the RCW varies by board, by revision of the board. So you need to be sure to take one that matches the board that you have. That's usually just reading documentation, figuring out which, which one. And another step that we need to do is for just for the LX1160, we need to compile the, the FIP DDR, and that can't be mixed with the other targets for reasons it's documented that it should not be mixed. So we need to run a second command just to be the, the FIP DDR. And I mentioned ab about FIT that we have a FIT image. Uh, I'm not sure how easy it is to read this, but this is a description of, of the feed image. We, we have the images that are inside the feed, uh, the kernel, the, 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 the DTB, and the init run FS. And we have a boot configuration that tells uh, the names of the keys that we have here. So this uses uh, the, the flattened device tree format, is, is the same format and the binaries are embedded inside the, the fit image. And we have two, two, we have a definition that is usually an ITS file, and we have the blob binary that is an ITB. And this is created using a tool from, from U-Boot called make image. So you just pass the input file and you get an output file. Uh, we also, because we are using fit, we have an U-Boot script to you know, boot, boot script that is responsible for, for booting the board. And this is an Ubuntu specific script that is a Ubuntu implementation to standardize boot in different boards because each board has its, its different implementation. So, so they standardize with this, with this. So we're not using group or, or in this case, we're just using Ubuntu directly to, to load the kernel. So this script is often named boot screen or boot SCR or boot SCR UMG, but it can be overridden in settings. If you're compiling Ubuntu, you can override it. And for the LX1160, there is this name, LX1160 ADB underscore boot, that is basically embedded in the code, so that's the default name. So bear in mind, if you're creating an image for the LX160, that's, um, embedded in, in the code, but you, you could technically change that uh, with some configurations from, from your boot. And we are also using uh, MK image to 
compile this script. So we have our script definition here, that is the, the boot CMD. We set our kernel arguments, like console, root, and other things. You could set the Linux, whatever here you want to use. And then we have some comments to, to load um, the ITB into memory, and we boot from memory. So this, this CMD is compiled with uh, MK image, it has a few arguments, and then the input, and then the output. So uh, mentioned before about the secure boot headers, these are created um, in the end, once you have everything. Uh, we have a tool from, from, from CST, from the coding sign tool, that help us create these secure headers. These, these two, uh, this tool is basically a, a bash script that calls a few, uh, a few other binaries, passing some input files. We have a few input files that are part of, of CSD. These are uh, uh, files that define which, which things should be signed. So it includes names of input and output. You often don't need to customize those, but if you don't customize, you might need to rename your files because it needs to match the, the file names that are defined there. Otherwise, you can, you can rename or you can configure for your own, uh, on your own to, to use the, the files and names that, that you want to. And, and this script is going to create a secure headers for, for a few or many files. So it creates a secure header for the kernel image in it in the runfs, the DTB, the, the kernel blobs, from the NXP blobs that are uh, is used for the initialization, depending on your platform, and also for U-boot and, and the, the fit image. And these headers are all concatenated into something called secure boot headers. And in the end, SD boot or MC boot, whatever you're using as a medium to boot. Um, so it seems complex, but once you know what you're doing, it is not that complex. The, the worst part was trying to figure out how these things work. And you might be thinking, can we do that in OBS? Uh, the short answer is yes, we can. Kiwi is very flexible. You can customize uh, the, your, your build image so you can define a custom bootloader and you can define custom partitions and other things. And the most important part is that we use the, the user-defined scripts to perform some actions. So this is, this is like most images, most ARM images, they are using it to write a boot to uh, define a location in the, in the, in the SD card or the, the image because this varies by platform and then maybe you need to change the partition also. It depends if it's Raspberry Pi or if it's another platform. And the most important scripts that we, we need to use here and remember is the predisk sync that is used to change the, the, the root tree contents. So you can copy files to the proper location, uh, the NXP blobs, the fit image, secure boot headers, so you can, uh, I'll, Copy these out to the correct locations where they 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 should be like in the disk, and you can use edit boot install to write binaries to the specific offsets of the disk image. So each file has its own offset. The offset varies by the boot medium. The offset varies by the board. So you need to search for documentation which offsets are for your board and, and for the, the LX160 uh, it's, it's documented and you can just take the binaries and write them in the proper location. Um, one thing about OBS, because we need to sign things, you have private keys. So you can't use the public OBS. You can't upload your public keys there, otherwise the world is going to see and Ideally, you're trying to protect your image. You, you want your, your keys to be stored safely somewhere. So <laughs> this could work in 
if you have OBS deployed on your own infrastructure, for example, or in our case, if we're using IBS, we could, but we're not building images uh, with, with an explicit cube boot enable because that's tied to the board. So that's up to, to the vendor that is shipping those devices. They need to sign with their keys and they need to rebuild the image. They don't need to rebuild most of the packages. They would need to rebuild Ubuntu and uh, ARM trusted firmware at least because you need to configure for the proper board that you have. And plus you need to create possibly uh, the fit image and other bits that you, you might you might want. We do have a project in OBS, but I'm not sharing here because it would disclose the, the customer name. And I believe there's some many days around. So, but if you're interested, I, I could point you to, to the project if you want to take a look. And I guess that's it. So thank you. Questions? Thank you for the talk. Uh, you're booting your platform with a fit image where kernel and it are these part of the fit image. Uh, have you looked into the process where you use this high assurance boot to verify till you boot and then use UEFI secure boot from there onwards? So basically verify the same shim and, and yeah, and move forward yeah. from there. Uh, so according to the documentation, it, it should be possible, but we didn't look into that because being honest, uh, we look at la how, how NXP did the, the Yocto layers. So we borrowed a, a bunch of things there. And the fit implementation was not my part. This was a team effort. There was a team behind this. So I'm not entirely sure why we chose it, but it, it is like, it was the easiest option for us at that time. But in theory, it should be possible to go to Ubut and, and let Ubut from there go to Grub and Grub go to the kernel. So in theory, it should be possible. Because if, if you do that, then that means uh, from Ubut onwards, it's just a normal secure boot process. It's the same for other uh, platforms. Yes, yes, but, but in, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you want uh, to be completely a completed chain of trust, you would need to, to sign the kernel and to bake the keys into boots, so That's already, the entire thing That would we be, do already. Ah, uh, okay. So you have shim, which is already signed, mm -hmm. so you just need to yes. add Microsoft yes, two, keys two, into two, two, boots. Yes, two, 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 two. Yes, there's the shim, okay, yes. So in, in that case, yes, it would possibly be better, yes. You could use a generic ARM EFI image to, to exactly. boot in that case. Exactly. So you don't need to customize firmware, so, so much. Firmware and OS image yes. are disconnected. Yes, 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 good. Um, in the image creation process, you said that the uh, firmware is doing some of the ciphering or supports some of the ciphering. So when, the vendor, when you want to use the vendor key to sign the, the kernel and the int RD, does this uh, has this to be an ARM machine to do it? Or can you also do it on an x86 machine? Uh, so I guess I could go back to the image. Uh, so here, we, this is specific to, to NXP, but it, it doesn't mean that other ARM platforms are not doing as similar. So. The validation in this case happens on, on the, the boot room that lives inside the, the SOC. So the SOC is going to, there is a fuse blown, it says intent to secure boot, and the, the CPU is going, I need to, to validate secure boot, is going to look for the keys and is going to validate the, the, the other areas before executing. So. I'm not I'm, sure how that works in x86 or a I'm different not, level. I'm not talking about the boot process. But you said that the, the, you have to use the vendor key when you, when you want to have other machines, the vendor key material. Uh, the, idea, the idea is me as a vendor, I have a device. This device is going to be deployed in the field. Let's, let's, let's assume, I don't know, you have a car and you as the car manufacturer, you're going to have your keys and you're going to flash those keys in all the boards that are in the car and you're also going to sign the images with, with that keys. Mm -hmm. So I don't want, as, a, as a, a vendor, 
that is shipping cars. I don't want to use SUSE's keys. I don't want to use Microsoft's keys. I don't want to use anyone else's keys. I want to ensure that it's just my image that puts there. So I guess, I'm not sure if that answers, but that's the idea that I would have my own keys. Yes, that's my understanding. Yes. The question now is, when, when you sign the images or sign the kernel, have you to do this on an ARM board or can you also do this on an x86 machine, the signing process? This can be done on an x86 too. Yes. These NXP tools are available for x86. Yes. X86. In, theory, in, theory, in theory, it should be possible. But we're, we're building all this in, 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 in OBS. So because we, our target is ARM, in theory, should be using ARM workers, not x86. Yes, of course, OBS is going to do it like that. But uh, NXP tools are but, available but, but you, for you x86. Can, you can I guess you can compile TFA because TFA is going to sign. So you can co cross compile that and uh, the other bits must, you need, either you cross compile some or they need to be compiled in, in ARM. Oh, sorry, uh, it's a rely on the what tool to sign the kernel. So the, the situation is uh, um, the NSP is a provider tool. So we to need to check the tool. Is it to sign the EFI file by the standard way? I mean, the follow the EFI spec. Because the shin is an EFI um, execution. But this, so, this yeah. process is not using uh, UFI standard at all. This is just custom NXP method of, of yes, but, our implementing but, secure boot. Yeah, but, but you just say if uh, we use a shin after the you boot, yeah. yeah, and Shin now is built uh, to be the PE calf execution format. And PE calf is uh, currently we use a PE sign to sign a PE calf format. So it's a follow the UEFI spec. Yeah, I, I mean the, the, the tool also need to do the same thing. I, I'm not sure what NXP is doing. Yeah, uh, sure. they, they are not even signing this shim like that. Uh, they, uh, it did really depends on how their boot ROM, you know, verify these images. So whatever format the boot ROM needs, uh, NXP is going to spit it out in that way. But after the you boot, the, everything should go through the UEFI uh, spec, right? In, in our, in our we, ideally we would like it to be like that, that yeah. uh, till you boot, it's a platform specific way. But from U boot onwards, it's the standard UE5 way. Yes. So, so we are holding such a presentation yeah. here. As Susan, we need to be careful. So this was a specific customer requested yes. project that he's talking about, what they've done there. And when we, you know, um, say this more general, I think we need to be careful to say that this is not how Secure Boot works on ARM, but rather UEFI Secure Boot, as Joey has said, yes. is working the same on x86 and on ARM from a certain point on. And rather what this is explaining is like the bits that are usually hidden um, on x86 world, if they're applying anything like this by, you know, the likes of AMI and the like who are producing like the UEFI firmware that then gets flashed on some uh, firmware, right? Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe I, f I forgot to add that the customer didn't want GRUB. They didn't want, uh, they, 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 they were trying to reproduce their environment uh, with OBS and with uh, TUSE underneath. So, so they didn't want GRUB and that's also a reason that we didn't have GRUB, didn't have GRUB. But uh, about uh, Everything is like the, the Ubuntu, the FA, and OPT, they, they would be in the, in the fit bin file, and in theory, all these would be signed, and that's basically what the, the boot room is going to, to validate, these three bits. So in theory, after that, you could do a generic UFI. And just to add what Andrea mentioned, yes, we do have, let's say, proper UFI, in, in ARM devices, like, but that's ARM for servers, data centers, not for embedded. So we do have Objection. like- Objection. Yeah. ARM system ready IR does yes. provide those yes. interfaces also for embedded devices. Yes, but I'm yet not aware of a platform that supports 
like uh, so this one of 2160 these. supports it for sure. All the NXP platform supports it. But we, uh, we, Raspberry Pi supports it. So. Yes, U boot, yes, it, yes, that yes, support is generic in U boot. So. There's even EDK2 available for the 2160. Yes, right? yes, the, the, the 2160 is, is, is system ready. But then I'm not sure how you would implement it, the chain of trust. In trust. So, anyway. So chain of trust is like, so till U boot, your boot ROM has verified. Uh, U-Boot will have Microsoft keys, U-Boot will verify mm -hmm. Shim, then Shim will verify Grub, Grub mm -hmm. will verify the kernel, and so on. Okay, okay, good. Any more questions? You're already in the okay, so thank you. <laughs>